Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to Celebrating Act 2, where today John Coleman and Manny Pacheco and I will be discussing our recent trip to Cinecon, an amazing yes. film festival. Yes, Manny. I, I, I have to tell you, Manny, I love riding your coattails <laughs> at all of these Hollywood events. You know everybody, but I, this was such a different event. This this was not what I expected. I expected something a little bit more film festival, big you know hordes of fans and uh, tables of uh, uh, you know stuff to buy and sell. And this was really an insiders event, wasn't it? Yeah, this yeah, this is sort of like a forgotten Hollywood, made for forgotten Hollywood because this is stuff that most people have forgotten. Yeah. yeah, you're right, Art. You're right, John. Uh, this is really something for the purists, the folks who are into preservation of, of uh, film and even buildings in Hollywood, uh, folks who uh, really cater to the what I call the B side of films, those B movies, those uh, serials, the, the stuff that you just would never see on the big screen. But there they are. And the, the folks who introduce them are real knowledgeable about um, what film preservation and what um, obscurity in filmmaking really means. Yes. In fact, you were one of the uh, introducers and one of the presenters, but we'll get into that in another video. Okay. Um, what I wanted to say was that uh, universally, the people you got to, to interview were, I, I don't know what else to call them except heavyweights, big wheat, big wigs, not, not famous names, but bigwigs in the industry, in the film preservation industry, mm -hmm. museum industry. I mean, uh, Hollywood Heritage, for instance, is a big a big organization in preservation for Hollywood. But this right. was preservation for films. Uh, just a wonderful event. And and uh, how did now? Do you know, do you know all these people? Is that well? I know most of them. I mean, I knew alan k Rohde, for example by reputation I, he's been at a number of events that i have been at but we were never really formally introduced and he was uh, so knowledgeable on the uh, legion the actual american legion in hollywood and, and of course the building that rests there he provides great information about uh where we saw many of the uh, many of the films uh, he really has a knowledge of how that building was was uh, created and the formidable Hollywood dignitaries that actually um, actually put their name. They actually signed on to to the idea of yeah. having a, an American Legion in Hollywood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great history. Uh, great history to the yeah. building. And I, I the other thing I couldn't believe, Art, it was it was Cinecon 58. Remember when we were saying 58? What does 58 mean? I can't believe it's been around right. 58, 58 years. years. It's the old, it's the oldest film festival, classic film festival in Los Angeles. Really? So that, that's really all you need to know. Turner Classic Movies celebrating 12, 13 years, 58 years for Cinecon. That is that is quite amazing. It was yeah. kind of interesting also uh, that uh, we had uh, several weeks, maybe about a month and change before, we had been in the same building as part of the TCM. And I hadn't done that much uh, research on the building because it was like the last thing on the list before we went home for the day. But it is an American Legion building that's still owned and run by the American Legion. And it has a storied uh, history. I don't know whether or not we got into that in any of the interviews uh, about uh, many of the big time stars who used to uh, uh, go there after work sometimes and play cards and get drunk and a lot of other things. And so well, it has Alan, a storied history, but it, but it's actually an American Legion uh, post. It's an actual post that happens to own this building where they used it for large get togethers. Yeah, and Alan K. Rohde gets into it. He's very knowledgeable and oh, we were lucky yeah. to get him. Uh, also, he's an expert on noir. I mean, he, he, he goes to many festivals. He's an author himself. A real bona fide historian, so we were lucky to get him. But we had we, we got some other really, you know, as you as you call them, John, heavyweights. Mm. And yeah. uh, one one of the other folks that we got that I was so happy, a, a good friend actually, uh, uh, Rena Keen and her husband David Keen. We interviewed Same David, and they 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 come down for Cinecon. 
uh, from up north in Fremont at the Niles s &A, uh, Museum. It used to be a film studio. And he was able to talk about what it was like to move cinema from the East Coast to the West Coast. It didn't start in Hollywood. It actually started in Niles and then proceeded down to Hollywood. So uh, they have a, a lovely a, a, a silent film museum d dedicated to the proposition that silent film is still relevant. And they have, up until COVID hit, and I think they're going to return to this now, uh, they would have silent screenings with organists playing in the background. It's it's really worth a trip mm. if you've never gone there. And I was expecting a half full crowd on a Saturday night, the, the, the February of 220 when I went up there to introduce uh, the uh, Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse with Rudolph Valentino. The place was standing room only and the organist or the piano accompaniment the, the gentleman worked his butt off for two hours mm. playing piano accompaniment to, yeah. to the movie. It was, it, 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 David Keene is very knowledgeable and yep. we were lucky to get him as well. Yeah. And, I, and that was a great interview that, by the way, uh, f for folks who are watching, I, I consider this the first video of our Cinecon experience. Mm -hmm. um, and we've got about 10 or 12 of these things. So every Friday, um, tune in to Celebrating Act Two and to Forgotten Hollywood, and we'll have another video, another short video with these interviews that we're talking about, with the some pictures of what played at the theater. Um, great right. stuff. I, I particularly like the soundies. Do you remember those? Yes. Uh, Mark Cantor is one of the folks who works with the Library of Congress to present these short two reel uh, uh, films that were made s specifically for like a jukebox style or a, uh, uh, the, these old time things where you could put in a quarter and, and you can actually watch these films. Yeah. Uh, they they specialized in music, and uh, it was a great way for African American musicians and singers, uh, vocalists, to get their name out into the public. And here's something I got to tell you: I, I was not familiar with soundies. Mark Cantor introduced it in such a lovely fashion, presented I, I don't know 15, 20 soundies on a Saturday afternoon. It was a great way to spend an early afternoon. Four days later. Uh, on on Tuesday, uh, three days later, on Tuesday, Turner Classic Movies has the Library of Congress expert to do a night of soundies. Ah. <laughs> All of a sudden, 72 hours later, I'm, I'm reintroduced to these soundies, watched a whole nother batch of them yeah. with the stories behind them. And everything they, everything they talked about on TCM complemented exactly what Mark Cantor was talking about in his presentation. Yeah. And so I got to see it live. I got to interview Mark. And then I got to kick back on my spare time, turn on TCM, and get reintroduced once again to Soundies. I've got the full 411 on Soundies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, they besides having a lot of um, great old films that you don't see anywhere else. Cinecon also had um, a television, I call it a television thing, but it's the before videotape, before digital video, television went out over the air, it was gone. It yeah, was gone. Right. They Somebody figured out we can record it on film. And what they did is they put a camera on a television set, I'm explaining it you, you know, euphemistically, and they recorded television shows. Now, they didn't record every television show, but they no. recorded a lot of the great TV shows in the early days of live television. And they called it KinneCon at CineCon. And they had they had Jack Benny, a clip from Jack Benny. Betty White. Uh, they had my favorite was the early Betty White show. Mm -hmm. She must have been 30 years old, 25 years old, you know, who I never knew she was ever young. Yeah, and you were having a good time. No, John, John, she was forever young. She was forever young. Uh, Kinescope, yeah, that was one way to, to showcase uh, and preserve, they thought, film. The problem with Kinescope, obviously, is the quality is quite poor. I mean, it really is. It was so poor, in fact, that when L L Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz negotiated the contract to do I Love Lucy, uh, what was written into the contract was that Desi was going to have the uh, actual filming of uh, uh, with, with three cameras uh, of the show 
with the, the cine cinematographer being Carl Freund of, of Metropolis and Dracula fame. Yeah. And, and Carl Freund preserved I Love Lucy so magnificently that it still runs in 2022. And there isn't a day that doesn't go by that an episode of I Love Lucy isn't on television somewhere in the globe. So, and, and you know, you know, Desi Arnaz gets great credit in the industry for creating the three camera film method of shooting a sitcom. Because prior mm -hmm. to that, the, and, and by the way, Kinnikon had a, an old sitcom. Yeah. Uh, a kinescope of an old sitcom. And you can look at this and what a difference. Oh, the, yeah. the live camera, intercutting the live camera versus film cameras. And and only Desi Arnaz uh, realized that it needed to be done originally on film, not live transmission and video. And he was also brilliant enough to place the cameras in a way where the studio audience could still see what was going on. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes. there was just so much texture into his into his, his decision making and you got to give you got to give desi a really a, a kudos but getting back to the kinecon i think we're going to do an episode on that right we're going to oh yeah we're going to play uh, some of those clips and talk about what it was like what television was like back then that's you know? that's fabulous that's yeah. really so, fabulous uh, do you remember the other um you interviewed a gentleman I, I'm sorry, I can't remember his name. About Vim movies, V I M was a no, small I don't, studio I don't have in the, Chicago. Yeah, I think I don't have the name in front of me, um, but we interviewed so many people. Yes. It's But I will tell you who we did interview, and we don't want to bury this one. We, you know, there were four actors who were going to receive legacy awards on four of the five nights of Cinecon oh, over yes. Saturday weekend. And of course, we uh, we interviewed uh, Jimmy Hunt, one of mm -hmm. the legacy winners. And of course, from the uh, remastered version of of uh, Invaders from Mars, yep. and a, a magnificent movie that captures the imagination of any young child from the 1950s who enjoyed science fiction. Jimmy Hunt has grown up to become a, a jolly, uh, just a wonderful gentleman, an easy individual to chat with. And then we, we got, as an added bonus, the icing on the cake, uh, uh, Janine uh, Perot, his co-star. Yes. And talk about a lovely individual. She was just fascinating to talk to. And then she admits that she had a crush on Jimmy when she was a child. That, I don't know if that was a scoop, but boy, was that fun. It was, it was true well, for her. <laughs> well, anyway, listen, guys, we, got, we need to wrap this up. But I have to implore people to please watch Celebrating Act Two every Friday when we present another um, of Manny's interviews from Cinecon. Uh, you're going to love these. They're all different, and they're just chock full of people who are really uh, impressive and knowledgeable experts in the field. Yeah, and also uh, to let everybody know that once we start releasing these, uh, which uh, and we don't have to uh, date them from now, but it'll be about two or three weeks from when you've seen uh, this video uh, from now, is that uh, we'll develop a playlist so that if you want to come back six months or nine months from now, we'll have a dozen or so of these uh, wonderful, wonderful uh, pieces about Cinecon. Uh, Cinecon 58 in 2022. They had all those numbers around. And uh, it'll be up on our website and on our YouTube channel uh, forever in perpetuity. So uh, yeah. just like the TCM and the uh, Hollywood Heritage Series that the three of us have done uh, over the last year. They're all there. If you want to go back and pick uh, and yeah. choose and get a few, they'll all be there on the playlist. And, and we had a great time. time. Great time we had. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, you, yeah. yeah. exactly. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.